the harbor at the end of Edward's branch line was busier than ever. Goods and passengers were arriving night and day, more so than usual. No sooner had one ship departed than two more came in. Donald and Douglas were away on Duck's branch line. So Edward and Bopo were left to keep up with the increasing work. Even Bill and Ben were sent to assist with the trucks. But that all came to a head one day, when Boko broke down just outside Edward's station. The fat controller then decided to take matters into his own hands. One afternoon, Edward arrived back at the harbor to an unexpected sight. Bill and Ben were talking to another engine, but it wasn't an engine Edward had seen before. It had traits of a regular steam engine, such as a funnel and a tender, but it was rather boxy in shape, almost like a diesel. The engine was backing up towards some old oil tankers. Nearly there, said Bill, cheekily. Nearly there, repeated Ben. But the engine was reversing too quickly and gave the tankers a great shove. They groaned and squeaked as they rolled a line. Isn't he a clumsy one? chuckled Ben. Quite awkward looking too, replied Bill. The engine went red in the face with embarrassment. That's enough, cut in Edward. You should know better than to play your silly games on newcomers. Now run along and fetch your tracks. The twins scoffed, but did so anyway. Edward sighed. I apologize on behalf of those two. They like to cause all sorts of trouble. Who might you be? I... I never. I've been sent here to help with the goods. So you're the new engine? Splendid! Welcome to Sodor, Neville. I'll be more than happy to show you around. Neville cracked a smile. He was beginning to feel reassured by Edward's welcoming attitude. Later, Neville was waiting patiently for Bill and Ben to bring him some trucks of fresh fruit to the market. But Bill and Ben were nowhere to be seen. Suddenly, Neville felt a rough bump from behind. Bill and Ben snickered. Got, Got ya! ya! They said in unison. Oh, <laughs> that never gets old, Bill chortled. He's still just as trickable, teased Ben. And awkward looking. I don't think Boca would be too pleased with an imposter diesel taking over for him, finished Bill. Neville sighed. Not again, he moaned. But once the guard blew his whistle, he went on his way. That night, he puffed sadly to Edward's station, where Edward was resting in his shed. Hello, Neville, greeted Edward. You look down. What's the matter? Those two tank engines played another trick on me, Neville said quietly, and they kept calling me awkward. I thought I told those two to keep the tricks to themselves, grumbled Edward. It always keeps reminding me of how I was treated back home. What? Before I came here, I worked as a goods engine on the other railway. I was told I was one of the most powerful at the time, able to pull enormous trains as far as the eye could see. But while I was strong, I wasn't so pleasing to look at. You see, I was built like this as a way for us to be cleaned without the need of the crews doing it themselves. Some of the bigger engines always used to call me Square, Breadloaf, 
Ugly Duckling, and all sorts of horrid nicknames. How awful, sympathized Edward. It was, Neville finished with a small crack in his voice. Well, if there's one thing I can show you, smiled Edward, it's that most of us Sodo engines don't care about looks. What's on the inside is just as important as what's on the outside. Then, Edward had an idea. Tell you what, there's supposed to be an order of steel arriving tomorrow. I'll let you take the train while I handle my passengers. Maybe you can show Bill and Ben a thing or two. Neville was intrigued by the idea and agreed. Next morning, Bill and Ben peeped into the yard. They found Neville backing down towards the long, long line of trucks with steel girders. Hey, look! They teased. It's awkward old Neville. Trying to be well strung as engine, are we? Neville tried to pay no mind. Deep down, he was getting a bit nervous. Then he remembered what Edward had said, and slowly began to build up confidence. The shunter released the brakes on the trucks, and the guard blew the whistle once boarding his brake van. Puffing hard and making lots of steam, Neville began hauling the heavy train out of the yards. The sound was deafening. Workmen waved and cheered. Edward was just coming down from the branch with his passengers and it was caught by surprise. Once Edward saw the twins, he could only smile. Seems awkward, Neville, is more than what you think, he winked at them. Take my advice, you two. Don't judge a book by its cover. You never know how good that book may be. <whistles> Bill and Ben were respectfully silent. Neville arrived back at Edward's station, where the other engines were waiting. The fat controller stepped down from Edward's cab. Edward has shown me about your performance today. A fine job from you indeed. <laughs> Thank you, sir, blushed Neville. He hadn't quite expected the praise. But, he went on, it seems that like there's lots of Mr. players of teasing as of recent. So I think these two would like to issue an apology. Well... Really sorry for playing all those tricks on you, Neville, said Bill. You did great back there, put in Ben. We didn't know you could be so powerful. That's quite all right. I'm sorry if my noise gave you such a fright, he joked. Edward laughed, and even the twins let out a small chuckle. A few days later, Boko came back from being mended. Edward and the twins were very happy to see him again, and they properly introduced him to Neville. Edward and Neville are now close friends, and Neville is proud to be part of a new family. Needless to say, he doesn't feel quite so awkward anymore. <laughs>